Hello there. Welcome to Just the Discs. We talk about Blu-rays here. My name is Brian, and uh, today we are dipping our toes back in the beautiful water of Radiance Films, which is obviously a company that's relatively new. And I'm was just talking to my friend uh, Ryan over at the Disconnected about how much Fran uh, and his company have accomplished in just not even a year's time. I mean, there was a beginning to promote Radiance, you know, about this time last year, but they haven't been putting discs in people's hands until January of 2023. So what's been accomplished by the label has been really impressive, and I'm continually intrigued by everything that they're doing. Um, they have... A box set here that I'm going to talk about, their first box set, but they've got a few more box sets in the work works coming, including a, uh, you know, uh, End of Civilization, three films of Pyotr uh, Szolkin, which is three films that were previously released by Vinegar Syndrome Labs. Um, there's another label releasing the fourth of the four films that were included in that set, but this set will have... All three films on their own discs, whereas the Vinegar Syndrome set is a two-disc set with all four films, more extras, uh, a very gutsy move uh, on Fran's part to do that. And so I'm excited uh, to check out that set. Uh, but let's talk about their first box set, which is really quite lovely. And uh, you see it here. It is called uh, Cosa Nostra. Franco Nero and Three Mafia Tales by Damiano Damiani. And um, I'll just show what we're talking about here to start. So this is a really nice uh, hard case. Good solid knock. Um, and it, of course, has their uh, outside um, label on it, which you know contains a description of all the films and... Uh, the extras. Now this set, like I said, very sturdy box, well put together, looks nice, um, has three films, and <laughs> this book. This is not a booklet by any stretch of the imagination. This is a 120-page book with new uh, and more archival writing as well, um, and this is just beautiful. I mean... Look at how thick that is. That is just a beautiful book. So they've really outdone themselves right out of the gate with the actual book that comes with it. Um, so that's wonderful. Now, Damiano Damiani is an Italian filmmaker that I am familiar with, um, but I haven't seen a lot of his stuff, and I haven't seen any of these three films I'm going to talk about. He did do things like um, Confessions of a Police Captain, which is one that's really well known in the um, Italian crime, you know, fan area. Uh, a Bullet for the General, which is a Western. He did Amityville 2, The Possession, which is a pretty crazy sequel. And uh, a lot more, but let's talk about the three films that are included here. So we have How to Kill a Judge is our first one. Uh, and this film is something that I um, I hadn't heard of prior to this set. Um, it's, of course, all these films have Franco Nero. This one's from 1975, and uh, I think it's an interesting meta sort of sounding movie about a filmmaker whose popular movie about a corrupt judge who is killed by the mafia seemingly foretells the murder of a magistrate who orders the film seizure. So that sounds fascinating. Um, you know, assuming Nero is the, um, the filmmaker. Um, but yeah, very curious about this one. And, um, you know, as usual, it's got, uh, the wonderful touch of radiance, which is to say that, it has some nice special features. Um, How to Kill a Judge 
has well all these seem to have a 2k restoration from what looks to be the original negative um, in this case how to kill a judge presented in Italian and audio English options uh, now in terms of the extras there is um, a lot for each one so I'm just lo looking at the um, descriptions on the actual website uh, there's a new interview with um, Franco Nero on this one discussing how to kill a judge that's a 13 minute interview from 2022 uh, a new interview with Alberto Pazota author of Regia Damiano, Damiano Damiani who discusses Damiani's contribution to the mafia crime genres and reception of his films in Italy that's 34 minutes Lessons in Violence, a new video essay on how to kill a judge by filmmaker David Cairns, um, new improved English subtitles, and so forth. Uh, so that's just the extras for this one. But again, sounds fascinating to me. I'm definitely into it. Whoops. Let's check out the rest here. So we have Cases Closed, Forget It. Um, and this one is about uh, Nero again, uh, a man arrested on suspicion of a hit and run, a successful architect is put in prison awaiting trial or release. Whilst there, he witnesses the grim reality of life behind bars, corrupt staff, corrupt inmates, an inhuman judicial system, and the power of the mafia. Um, so a kind of prison movie, behind bars, expose kind of thing. Uh, Damiani was known to be a very political filmmaker and was not afraid to, you know, tackle institutional criticism and uh, just really come after, you know, societal injustice as he saw it. And um, I, I really admire that about the films I have seen. So this is, this is sounding fascinating to me. Uh, this one, let's see here. In terms of extras... Um, there's a lot on Day of the Owl. We'll get to that in a second. Uh, so this one, um, new interview with, uh, star Franco Nero discussing the case is close. Forget it. This is a 14 minute interview from 2022 an archival documentary on the making of the case is close. Forget it. Featuring actor, uh, Corrado Solari, assistant director Enrique Bergier and editor Antonio Ciliano. And that's a 28 minute uh, archival documentary from 2015 um, and then Italy's cinematic civil conscience an examination of the like, life and works of Damiano Damiani a visual essay on the career of uh, uh, Damiani uh, by Damiani critic uh, Rachel Nisbet that's a 35 minute um, brand new feature from Rachel Nisbet who's a great source for Italian film criticism uh, huge knowledge of giallo and Italian horror, but definitely in interested to hear her take on Damiani as well. So that is Cases Closed, Forget It. And then the other one is called The Day of the Owl. And this one actually has a pretty interesting cast, and it has Nero himself, and then Claudio Cardinale and Lee J. Cobb, uh, some, some American acting muscle with... Lee J. Cobb starring with Franco Nero, which that in and of itself, you know, is enough to intrigue me into wanting to check that one out. Um, and this one is set in Sicily, and it's a violent crime drama that tells the tale of an Italian cop who heads to a small island town to look into the death of a construction supplier. And once there, he is shocked by the influence the mafia has over the people and even himself. Uh, so... Again, another fascinating sounding movie and one that uh, I definitely want to check out. Again, there's a lot of extras here for this um, new 2K restoration of Day of the Owl from the original negative presented in the original Italian version and the shorter export cut with English audio. That's 109 minutes for the Italian, 103 minutes for the English and I, mes I didn't mention it, but 2K restoration of the case is close, forget it, from the original negative presented in Italian and for the first time in English audio options. So I guess that's a brand new thing for that film. Um, but Day of the Owl seems to be high on my list in terms of which one I'm going to watch first. 
Um, this has a new interview with star Franco Nero featuring archive footage of uh, Damiano, Damiano Damiani and Leonardo Scassiza uh, discussing Day of the Owl. This from 2022, that's 17 minutes. Archival interview with Nero uh, and writer Ugo Puro and production manager Lucio Trenti discussing the making of Day of the Owl. That's 27 minutes. That's from 2006. Uh, Identity Crime Sis, a filmmaker and Italian crime expert, uh, Mike Malloy, discusses the Day of the Owl in the context of the formation of the Italian crime film genre. Uh, that's from last year, uh, 20 Minutes. And Casting Cobb, A Tale of Two Continents, a video essay by filmmaker Howard S. Berger looking at the actor Lee J. Cobb's career, transition from Hollywood to Italy, and the archetypes he tended to play. Uh, brand new, that's 33 Minutes. Um, fascinated by... Lee J. Cobb and wasn't even fully that aware of him being one of those actors that transitioned from um, United States to Italy. You know, I know of a lot of actors that did, but he wasn't one that I was quite as aware of. Um, so then we also have an archival interview with Claudia Cardinale from Belgian TV. That's from 2017. She discusses her long storied career, 22 minutes. And, and that's it. So you've got a lot of extras, new scans, uh, and three Italian films with Franco Nero that I've never seen before. So i um, very, very excited to check out this brand new box set and this wonderful book. And this is a hefty book <laughs> that comes with that set. So the kudos to uh, Radiance for what looks to be a home run first box set right out of the gate. Um, okay, let's go through some other Radiance titles uh, that I have gotten. Um, I really love that Fran decided to do some Altman films that one of which this one had never gotten a Blu-ray before at all and the other had gotten a Blu-ray but had gone out of print and didn't have too much in the way of extras so we'll get to that in a second but you're going to win my heart with your label if you start releasing the Altman films that have yet to make it to Blu-ray and there's definitely a good handful of them um you know, I know the much maligned quintet, you know, may never happen. That's a Fox movie. I don't know. Actually, a lot of the stuff that's left are Fox titles, and I know those are going to be harder to license via Disney. But I'm a big fan of quintet, as maligned as it is. I like A Perfect Couple. I like uh, Health. You know, there's there's quite a few left that could get a great release, and I, I hope that's the case. But this is a really interesting one because this one – is a movie that's been critically maligned for years and one that I personally didn't fully give a fair shake until this release. I was I don't I wouldn't say I was ironically getting it um, because uh, it's not my favorite Altman, but I was really intrigued by the idea that this would be one that Fran would decide to put out. So I really decided to give it another look and it's definitely problematic. You know, there's some things about it that are tricky, but um, the characters themselves that these two guys are based on, O.C. and Stiggs are from characters created by the National Lampoon. Uh, and there is a really neat, I want to say like 120 minute documentary on the making of the film by writer Hunter Stevenson featuring new archival interviews with the cast and crew. Um, and it really gives a great overview of who these characters were. They were recurring characters in the National Lampoon. Um, and they were always doing outrageous things and they were outrageous characters. And this movie lives up to that. The basic idea is that they are a pair of teens who carry out sort of a vendetta against a middle class neighbor, uh, Mr. Schwab, played by um, Altman regular uh, Paul Dooley, who I'm a huge fan of. Um, Jane Curtin plays his wife. So they are constantly harassing this guy. And, um, you know, <laughs> getting his insurance canceled uh, on his grandfather's retirement policy. I mean, it's it's... It, 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 as his insurance company has canceled his grandfather's retirement policy is part of the plot. But um, these characters are just so outlandish. And the guys that Altman ended up casting, I think, really do a nice job of portraying these two guys who, at the time I watched it, 
years ago I found to be a little hard to take, but I think my attitude towards them and what they're doing has shifted a bit, <laughs> you know, uh, come to 2023. So anyway, um, from characters created by Ted Mann and Todd Carroll from the National Lampoon, the magazine that ushered in the biggest comedy of the era in Animal House, Altman brought O.C. and Stiggs to the screen, a blazing satire of 1980s America, a precursor to the delinquent characters like Wayne and Garth and Beavis and Butthead. The film has been described as cooler than Ferris, as savage as Heathers. Uh, that's Hunter Stevenson. Beautifully shot with visual anarchy to match its acerbic screenplay, O.C. and Stiggs features a sensational cast, including Jane Curtin, Paul Dooley, John Cryer is one of the sons of um, Schwab, uh, Dennis Hopper, uh, Melvin Van Peebles, who's great in this, uh, and others. And this is presented on Blu-ray for the first time. Now, this is a region-locked, region B disc. So maybe there will be a stateside release. That's possible. However, uh, this extras package, besides that 120-minute documentary, which was very impressive, there's a new interview with the camera operator, Robert Reed Altman, um, as well. And between those two things, I got a lot more context for this movie that I never had that has given me a different appreciation for it. So kudos again to Radiance for going Altman and going for one of its obscurities that's less uh, lauded, less loved. So I, I'm i very happy about that. Now, Thieves Like Us is the other Altman film that he's bringing to Blu-ray. This had gotten a Kino release, uh, which again is out of print, but I don't think had any extras, and this has some. But I'll, let's let's talk about the movie for a minute. Now, this one is um, based on the novel. I want to say it's the yeah Edward Anderson's pulp novel, and this has previously been adapted by Nicholas Ray as They Live by Night, and I believe Altman declares maybe in the commentary which is I think um brought in from the DVD that he never watched They Live By Night which is one of my favorite film noirs this is something of a Bonnie and Clyde story but it's it's way more low-key and it's done that sort of Altman style so it's a bit more meandering in the narrative and anyway um it's about a group of criminals that daringly escape from a prison in Depression Era Mississippi and they survive by robbing banks and hole up with a gas station attendant uh, where injured uh, Bowie, that's Keith Carradine, falls in love with the attendant's daughter, Kichi, that's Shelley Duvall, in one of the early Altman films that she did. Uh, but this is a real showcase for her. It's, a lo like I said, kind of a quiet role, but she's really good in it, and she and Keith Carradine are great together. And it's made within one of the great runs of back-to-back -back classics by any filmmaker. Altman made uh, classics like M.A.S.H. and The Long Goodbye and with Thieves Like Us. Um, and he takes more of a faithful approach to the source material, preserving the original tone and, p and period of the novel, uh, going back to historical and American myth themes that Altman mined so brilliantly in his earlier McCabe and Miss Miller. Critically play, praised, uh, noted critic Pauline Kale described it as the closest to flawless of Altman's films, a masterpiece. High praise. I'll be honest, I don't know if I quite agree with that, but I do think it's really a great Altman movie and one that is under-talked about. Uh, I don't believe it's available streaming, as neither is uh, O.C. and Stiggs. So one of the only ways you're going to be able to watch this is through this Blu-ray. Now this one is also a Region B lock disc. But since it's already come out in the States and got out of print, I don't know the status of whether or not a new disc would come out. But, um, yeah, this is this is a good one. And uh, I'm very happy to get both of these on Blu-ray, two Altmans. So those. Um, next up, we have one called uh, A Moment of Romance. And this film was another one that was... Off My Radar, it's directed by Benny Chan, and it is uh, about a small-time hood played by Andy Lau, uh, who's enlisted by a triad boss, uh, Tommy Wong, as a getaway driver for a daring heist that goes wrong, thinking um, that his 
the Andy Lau character, thinking fast, he takes uh, Jojo, Jacqueline uh, Lin Wu, uh, hostage to save his skin, but the bosses order her to be killed. They escape and begin a forbidden relationship while being chased by both sides of the law. This is produced by uh, Johnny Toe and Ringo Lam. So some real heavy hitters in terms of um, action cinema there. Um, but is sensationally directed by Benny Chan in his feature debut with a breakneck pace and violence reminiscent, reminiscent of Toe and Takeshi Miike. Uh, it's, the, it's a beautiful and emotive sensibility that you could attribute to somebody like Wong Kar Wai that comes through. And it features stunning performances by Lau and Wu in uh, her debut work. Um, it's a classic of Hong Kong cinema that has been much uh, imitated but rarely bettered. Um, so it doesn't say that this is a debut on Blu-ray, but I've never seen it on Blu-ray before. Um, this is an a region AB disc. Um, it's a new 4k restoration of the film from the original camera negative. Uh, there's an archival interview with Benny Chan who discusses his start in the industry, um, a moment of romance and his collaboration on the film. That's a 2016 interview. That's 21 minutes in love and danger. HK cinema through a moment of romance, a new visual essay by critic and Asian cinema expert, David Desser on the genre tropes in a moment of romance and their use in Hong Kong cinema in general. That's brand new. That's 26 minutes and also an audio commentary by, uh, Asian cinema expert, Frank Zhang, uh, newly translated English subtitles, reversible sleeve, which all of these have, by the way. They they tend to do right by collectors and allowing for, you know, some control to flip the uh, sleeve. Uh, this has a limited edition booklet featuring writing on the iconic cast and crew by critic Sean Gilman and a profile of Benny Chan and Tony Williams, co-editor of Hong Kong Yo Noir. So this one sounds fascinating and, again, was totally off my radar, which I got to say, Fran is doing a lot of that, um, which is neat, and I'm happy about it. And then lastly, we'll, we'll talk about this one called The Iron Prefect, also known as I Am The Law from 1977. Um, it's set in Palermo, Sicily, uh, November 1925, and Giuliano Gemma plays Cesar Mori, who's the new prefect of the city, uh, soon to be known as the Iron Prefect, and he begins a ruthless war against the Mafia. This is a good compliment to the Cosa Nostra set, it sounds like. Um, a sinister organization that has subjugated the island for centuries, something that the dictator Benito Mussolini and the fascist, fascist authorities can no longer allow. This also has Claudia Carnali and a, a nice Italian cast, but another film that I wasn't really aware of, um, and it's based on a true story of this Cesar Mori character, who um, on the website they say an Elliot Ness in the untouchable style cleanup for the mafia type movie. So that's something to, to consider if you're into that kind of film. Um, uh, Pasquale Squerti the, directs this stunning period piece, which won David uh, Donatello uh, an award for best film and features spaghetti Western icon, of course, Giulia, Giuliano Gemma, brilliantly playing against type as the titular hero. Um, so this is Limited edition Blu-ray features, you have a 2K restoration of the film from the original negative presented with Italian and English audio options, uh, archival interview with Pasquale uh, Squirty and star Giuliano Gemma from 2009, new interview with Squirty, Squirtiri, uh biographer Domenico Manetti, that's from 2023, uh, new appreciation of Giuliano Gemma by filmmaker Alex Cox, who I'm a huge fan of as a filmmaker and as a film fan. I love how much he's been involved in the physical releases of a lot of Italian Westerns. And now in this case, uh, sort of a, an Italian gangster fighting gangster film. But I love to hear his takes on Italian cinema. He is, um, like I said, a great filmmaker and always has interesting um, ideas about films. Uh, this also includes a limited edition booklet featuring new writing by Italian expert uh, Guido Bonsaver, Bonsaver and 
an original article on the real life Caesar Mori and his mafia raid as depicted in the film. And this is only a 2000 limited 2000 uh, release region A and B this one. Um, but anyway, that's all I've got for this round of Radiance Love. Um, I continue to be excited, as I said, about what they have coming, including, of course, and I mentioned it before, but Messiah of Evil, their box set for that film, looks to be salivation worthy. Uh, I cannot wait to get that one in my hands. I'll definitely talk about it on this channel when I do. But anyway, for now, um, thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. And I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.